As promised, this week we're going to look at controlling your internal state. So it's the ability to choose what mode of functioning you're in when you're doing something. Now, if you're on the autism spectrum, you're probably familiar with feeling everything is normal and then suddenly be emotionally or physically overwhelmed. Everything feels fine and without any warning, suddenly there's the inability to function that emerges. This is usually commonly known these days as meltdowns. Everything I try to show about communication depends on the ability to notice very small details in behavior. This in turn depends on the ability to be very calm and collected. This might not be accessible to you right now, and there's two reasons that might be. The first one is classically associated with autism, and the second one is classically associated with ADHD, which is also on the autism spectrum. So at the autism end of the spectrum, we have a state that's called hyperfocus. It's an almost superhuman ability to concentrate. This state is achieved by blocking out everything that is not related to what we're concentrating on. Now, this contains both external information, sounds, activities of other people, uh, the passing of time, and it also includes internal information, like hunger, fatigue, uh, the need to go to the bathroom, and the changes in our emotional state. This is going to transform the conscious area of the brain into a fortress of efficiency. It's a space where impossible problems can be solved and incredible things created. But that doesn't mean that the other information is not also being collected and processed by the brain. And if it gets loud enough, it's going to break through the walls of the fortress and flood into the conscious area of the brain. When it is sensory information that breaks through, usually that's not too much of a problem. Uh, we'll, I'll remember having someone coming over and shaking us out of our hyperfocus state because he's been calling at us for five minutes with no response from us and he thinks we're having a seizure. Sometimes you know, you'll look down and say, oh shit, how long has my shirt been on fire? But when it's emotional information that's breaking through, that can cause problems. At this point, it's important to remind ourselves of a couple of things. The first one is that even if we're not in full hyper-focus mode, we still might be blocking out some sensory and, and emotional information just to help us deal with the stress of a situation. Things like being in school, at, uh, at work, in a crowd, at a party. I really hate parties. And the other thing is that emotions, they assign meaning to changes in our environment even when these changes are too small to make it into our conscious mind. For instance, we're going to feel fear before we know what, what we're afraid of. There's types of emotions that can really build up. Things like frustration that we get when we're repeatedly failing at something. Anger that informs us someone is trying to take something away from us, either something real or something abstract, like our sense of identity, and fear that informs us that something in our environment might be dangerous to us. If these emotions build up past a certain threshold, 
the person experiencing them will be overwhelmed either with rage or with panic. Even neurotypicals are typically not very good at sensing fluctuations in their emotional state. With a little bit of training, however, we can sense very, very small modifications in our emotions, and if needed, we can neutralize them. In the case of the ADHD end of the spectrum, and we're talking probably about the worst named medical condition in history. People with ADHD typically have the ability for hyperfocus, and anyone with hyperfocus cannot legitimately be called having an attention deficit. And in the case of hyperactivity, we have a condition that's being treated with amphetamines. And we'll learn why next week.